All right. So are we all vendors here? I'm curious. Yes. Stackpad, Centrelink, Kingsoft. Fastly. Fastly. Yeah. It's like Hater. I recognize that shirt. OK. All right. I guess we're all talking to each other. And, and, an, and an analyst. You're a sell side guy, right? Uh, Bias. Bias. OK. All right. So my name is Haseeb. Uh, I work for a company called Rafe. Um, I will talk today about um, a trend we see as it relates to applications. And uh, when I think about the kinds of applications we are addressing and we're helping improve performance for, I think in terms of you know, new internet and old internet. And uh, I always, uh, at least when we started raising money a, a year ago, I started talking about building performance in infrastructure for new internet applications. Um, so w what does that mean? Let me start there and then we'll talk about everything else. So to me, new internet as a contrast to old internet is Yahoo. So I, I was in college when that was a thing um, and CDNs were born there on the other side and then we've slowly additively made them better and better and better so that we can do some of these things uh, today. Netflix as an example, coincidentally, um, uh, we're, we're at an Edge Summit. Um, two days ago, I've, I met a friend of mine from, from back home. So I was born in a country called Pakistan. And he's a, he's, a, he's a movie guy, he's a movie producer. And he was telling me about how Netflix runs Edge caches in the country of Pakistan just to make the experience for end users in Pakistan better. Doesn't bring them over the internet, runs them in Pakistan. And he's seen it. So it's incredible how many things are happening in Edge to the fact that there's, you know, Netflix is running, you know, these kinds of things in the country I came from, which is, you know, relatively, relative to the rest of the world, it's a small country. Um, what else is a modern application or a new internet application? Anything interactive. Um, so Netflix is certainly an example of that. Anything personalized is a, is a new internet application uh, because, you know, you, it, it basically serves you an experience based on who you are and so on. Location driven apps, if you use Uber, as a modern application, based on your location, you are being served some content. Online gaming, of course, you know, we're going to hear from Haste uh, today, later today, talking about Fortnite. Of course, you know, data ingestion, so a lot of IoT use cases also fall into this bucket. So how do we solve these problems today? That's what I'll kind of focus on. I'll talk about the state of the art, and I'll kind of talk about maybe another way to think about uh, these kinds of problems. So um, any application we look at, Applications have static content and things that are not static. Static content, we have CDNs for, right? There's tons of CDN people in this, in the, in this uh, event today, right? And what they do primarily is object storage, right? So there's a big cache, essentially hard drives at the edge of the internet, and we park stuff there, and there's logic getting better and better to figure out what to park there, when to park there. The gentleman from Vimeo talked about getting, you know, you know kind of uh, permanent access to caches at the edge of the internet uh, for his application. So that's what CDNs do, and they've done that very, very well. But when it comes to things that are not static, what do we do today? And really, that's my, my kind of focus today. So the first thing that, at least when I first started hearing about CDNs, I heard about this thing called uh, dynamic site acceleration. So I'll tell you the company that I'm talking about, DSA. Um, the promise is, hey, your internet sucks. So we're going to give you a better than internet experience. Every student talks about this, right? And we all understand what the value of this is, right? There's a lot of value in this. But I think what the, the challenge is, and at least in my limited experience, uh, having spent some time at Occam also, is that the way this kind of ends up working out is, depending on how interactive the application is, you hit terminal velocity on the, on, the, on the wire, right? So you can only go so fast if you're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth many, many, many times. And that becomes a bottleneck. Anybody disagree with that? Anybody agree with that? Yeah. This is a big problem, right? So we, my opinion is, you know, CDNs, everybody understands that there's a problem as it relates to uh, the interactive content, but this is, in effect, the state of the art. There's one other thing we keep hearing about in our industry off late, which is, hey, um, Functions, workers, uh, you could write uh, small functions at the edge of the internet and, and uh, use that to provide a better experience. But here's the problem with functions, the context of the function. So the way functions work, and lambda functions, workers, doesn't matter what you call them, the way they work is you receive a request and you process it with the function. The next request comes, you run a new request. 
you know, you get a new function and you run it. The third request comes, you run a new function. So the context of execution of a function is a request. So here's a question for you. These three requests on the page, if I want to just look at the payloads of each request and count the total number of bytes sent by all of each of these requests, how do I do it? I can't use functions for that. I need something else because functions only look at a request at a time. So there are a number of challenges of functions as well as it relates to being able to process interactive experiences at the edge of the internet. Anybody agree with that, disagree with that? Yes? Meh? Yes? Uh, by the way, one other thing about functions. Uh, my opinion on, on any technology that requires that a developer change the way they do things is not going to work. So if I come to you and I say, hey, I can make your application go 10 times faster if all you have to do is uh, rewrite your application. So you're not going to do it. Yeah, that's a TCP accelerator. Yeah, exactly. Right, SDKs. Anytime you have to rewrite your application, it's a challenge. So my opinion is these things are great for very very specific use cases, but it don't actually work well when you go any further than that. So, so obviously I'm talking about certain technologies that we're used to, and I'm kicking them. So clearly I must have a solution that is better than this. Let me talk about what we do. So. Um, before I go there, actually, let me talk about how um, we, I, sh I showed Netflix earlier. How do the Netflixes of the world and the YouTubes of the world solve this problem? So what they do is some, some of the obvious stuff, they end up building a better network, right? They want to be closer to the users, so they have better bandwidth, better pops, sharing relationships. These are obvious things that we have to think about. But here's a not so obvious thing when it comes to building an application at the edge of the internet. And that has to do with how do I get my code in the edges that I have control over? It's a very simple thing. Let's say I go and partner with somebody. As, a, as an application developer, I go to Kingsoft, Bill here, and I say, hey, Bill, give me access to all of your pops in China. How do I get my code into all of his locations? Actually, that's not a very simple problem to solve. How do I get my keys into all these locations, my private keys? Not a simple problem to solve. How do I get my logs back? So the gentleman from Vimeo earlier talked about getting logs back, uh, telemetry back. How do I actually do that? It's not a simple problem to solve. This is where most solutions falter. This is where what happens is application developers, they end up becoming operations teams. And that's the rub, right? There are SaaS companies, security companies, interactive gaming companies who eventually end up investing in ops teams just to do this. And that shouldn't happen. Because what that does is, is adds this massive barrier for the next company that wants to be like Netflix, can't do it. For the next company that wants to be like Haste, can't do it. It's very, very hard. We want to solve this problem. So what we do is what CDNs did for static content delivery, we want to do for compute. We want to help our customers run microservices, just any application, containerized applications, at the edge of the internet. Write your code the way you do today. We will help you get your latency-sensitive microservices as close to your end users as possible. What CDNs do for static content, we do for microservices. So I said microservices, so that means containers. So obviously we must be running a ring of compute with containers out there somewhere. So we partner with a number of providers to make this happen. One of them is, is my friend Bill here with Kingsoft in China. We have a few others uh, worldwide who we partner with to deliver a platform to our customers. Um, in addition to running a container platform, and this is something that, you know, in terms of as we think about building a platform in our IP, it, it occurred to us very quickly as we started building this platform that just being able to run containers at the edge of the internet is actually not good enough. So many people talk about distributed container management. The challenge is, uh, and there are two things that are, I think, gaps in our thinking as I see edge computing companies out there. One is a lot of people when they design containerized platforms for edge computing, they make the assumption, and Dan talked about this earlier, that the edge is like AWS. When I go ask for a resource with AWS, I'm guaranteed to get it. Right? I ask for an EC2 instance, I ask for a container, I will get it, guaranteed. Right? That's how AWS works. But if I go to a certain edge, I may run out of space. So what happens next? Because an edge could be 10 servers, or two racks, or 10 racks, eventually I'm gonna run out of space. So what happens next? So if we don't combine container management, container platforms, with actual traffic management, so that we only send traffic to where a priori there is code running for your application, it's not going to work. 
in the CDN world, there's a concept called cache miss. I'm sure all of us know what that means, right? With a static object, you can have a cache miss. If the object is in there, no problem. Go to the origin, fetch the object. But when you hit an edge and your application is not running there, you can't do a cache miss on applications. They have to be running or not, right? So we have to solve that problem. So we have to rethink how cache misses work in our, in our world where we're running applications. And then finally, across our provider network, we could be running 1,000 edges right now. Do you really need your applications running a th in a thousand places? Because it costs you money to run them, right? So probably not. So we must be able to figure out where to run your code based on some metric. And you know, outside of this conversation, I'm happy to chat about what that means to us. But we've kind of come up with a really interesting way to watch end user traffic patterns to figure out exactly where to run your code so that we don't run your code everywhere. And Edge is a very constrained resource. Unlimited time, unlimited capital, we should run everybody's code everywhere. But yeah, there's no such thing. So we have to be judicious about how we help our customers get to the edge, but at the same time, if you make it so expensive that they can't come here, the edge is not going to be a reality. So things like this have to be built so that not only can people come to this platform easily, but at the same time, it's cost effective, which means we must decide where to run their code based on user patterns, and then orthogonally, I guess, uh, if there's no traffic in a certain region, they should not have their code running there. A CDN may pre-position the data everywhere based on the assumption that uh, they can. We do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we actually have a, I still, I still say we. They used to see, have a feature, Akuma has a feature where you could do that if you want to, pre-positioning. Right? If you can, you, if, you, if you choose to, you can. Right? You just have to pay more money because it's a storage cost. Yeah, well, eBay does that, for example. It's a public, public information. Uh, but you know, in, in, when it comes to code, you may not want to do that. So we have to spend a lot of time thinking about how to make, solve that problem. So the idea here is, look, end of the day, we understand what this is, right? This is about going from this to closer. If I can do things closer to the user, it's better. But at the same time, you know, look, of course, everybody agrees with this. But being able to deliver a platform that is easy enough for developers to be able to bring their existing application to the edge without having to rethink anything, that is a really, really hard problem to solve. But if we don't solve that, nobody's going to come. Right? And that has always been the challenge. Right? We talked about, you know, earlier about technologies and not, not uh, solutions or use cases. Right? We have to you know, focus on how do we bring people e closer. This is a developer platform. How do, we, how do we bring them onto this platform faster? And of course, I talked about, uh, <laughs> about functions. So I kicked them already. So I should call out what, what that means in constant functions. So relative to how functions work, which is per request, if you think about it, if you run an application at the edge of the internet, you don't have that problem anymore. You can, you can run them for as long as you want, assuming there's traffic. You can process things as long as you want, assuming there's traffic. And of course, the question I asked earlier, how do I calculate the sum of my payloads? I can do that if I actually run an application, of course. Our platform that I've talked about already, um, uh, this platform runs on a, on a number of provider backs. So we are a software company. Uh, we actually don't own anything. We work with partners to deliver the service. Uh, we run in uh, a, a full SaaS mode, which is we sell essentially a multi-tenant platform to our mid-market customers. And we run a hybrid mode where, depending on the customer, they may already have footprint if it's a large enough customer. And the challenge they're having is the software. Uh, how do I manage everything? How do I get my footprint out? and so on, these are the two models we support. And uh, you know, even though we are all vendors here, if you actually want to try it out, it's a developer platform. Kick the tires. Just email eval at Rafa. Set up an account for you. Give it a shot. See what you think. That's my pitch. Any, any questions for me? Why are you asking questions? You know everything about I, I know the answers. Okay. I think uh, so um, if you have a, assuming you have a container available, it's two to three minutes for your application to show up at the edge of the internet. So usually when we do demos, we'll take somebody's actually existing container. They'll have something available in their, in, their, in their dev environment, and they can take that container and make it available across our network two to three minutes. Can you describe your localization uh, protocol or, or, or algorithm? How do you localize traffic? Ah. So basically what we do is we actually we watch uh, end user traffic and we collect RTT information from all traffic that we watch, process that to figure out 
uh, whether a certain segment of your customer base is not getting the experience you want. So here's something that I didn't talk about given, given the question. Let me, let me address that. How do we know where to run the code T0? So in my opinion, the gap in cloud uh, public cloud thinking is when you log into AWS, right, the console, on the top right, the first question AWS asks you is, does anybody know what it is? Where do you want to run your code, right? What region do you want to run your code in? Yeah, so I don't know what region do I want to run my code in because I don't know where my users are, right? So what if we didn't ask them? So what if we watch their traffic and figure out where their user population is? So we look at user population worldwide and we drop them into these small clusters of users. And if we see any one cluster light up, that's the, we need to be close, close to that. So we keep doing this forever. As close to them as possible. Yep. So we actually run the container when there is traffic. So we don't pre-run them because that would be a, ba a cost for the customer. So it takes, about, uh, it, it takes about a minute and a half for us to figure out there's new traffic in a location. It takes about another minute or so to, for us to get something lit up. The long pole is DNS, not so much DNS from our perspective. It's for the, for the endpoint. So usually browsers or anything, what they do is they, they do what's called a get, get host by name call, right? So hey, I mean, get host by name doesn't know what TTL is. So that browser may take longer. If it's tied to an edge, it's going to keep, keep with that edge. But what happens is after some time, they're going to refresh their TCP connections and they're going to find the new edge. So over time, this works itself out. Yes, sir. You? So, and, and Salesforce acquired a company called NewMob. Oh, right. Right? Yeah. I mean, the, that's great. Hey, free money. So, so here's my opinion of, 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 of that market. Um, so basically, the, the, the promise with these mobile, mobile SDKs, mobile CDN SDKs was, uh, we're going to give you better than TCP for the last mile. Right? The challenge with that is, most data is actually not going up. It's actually coming down yeah. in these use cases. So it actually doesn't help you. Because the protocol they use, which is quick, which is UDP-based protocol, it's only sending data up. When you're coming back down, you don't have any control over it anyway. Right? So I'm not really sure how well these work. For, for very specific use cases, that particularly that have to do with gaming, if you have control over the endpoint, which is also a UDP endpoint, it works really, really well. Anything outside that actually doesn't work very well. So there's a lot of data that shows great ideas. It's just not the right thing to do. So there's better solutions than that, in my, very, in my opinion, which has to have to do with better TCP, uh, basically congestion control algorithms that you can use. So hey, Roblox buying PacketZoom makes a lot of sense. A typical app developer using PacketZoom, I don't know. Maybe you do. I have a question. So your software company is deployed on other cloud infrastructure. And what is your preferred level of integration with public cloud? We need a Linux box or end Linux boxes and we'll take over. And bandwidth, yes, let's not forget the, the peering. Yeah, uh, no, no kernel access, we just need a Linux box. Actually, yeah, we'll do module accesses, we don't need to patch the kernel. Yeah, the idea is we don't know where we'll be running, so my perspective on this company was we should not invest in any physical footprint, just assume software. So if we have to cut corners by, by needing to scale horizontally versus vertically, like for example, we don't need DPDK to make our packets run faster. At some point in the future, should we do that? Maybe, but not today. We can build a company at a you know, much lower cost. I'd love to talk to you about our platform. Yes, yes. Any other questions for me? This is, this, so this is great, because it turns out that I get to meet a lot of vendors for us in this, call, in this event. Yes. Anything else? I'll give you 10 minutes back. Thank you, guys. Thank you.